In this episode, we've just arrived into Newport, Rhode Island after our passage from Nova Scotia. We've got some chores to do, so we spend a couple of days in town tackling the to-do list. After working on the outboard and loading up on provisions, we depart and begin making our way through the Long Island Sound. We're back in our home waters now, where we sailed Calico skies for a decade before taking off. Though we know the area well, there are still some surprises in store for us during our sail down memory lane. Not every day you have a massive pirate ship going by Anchorage, coming at me. It's so fun to be in Newport because it's boat mayhem. And coming from Canada, where the town, the closest town to us, there's a population of 700 people. Um, you know, there's definitely like more boats in this harbor than we saw people in Canada for the whole summer, That's for sure. For yeah, it's called to shock. Got there, hun. Got our new Bergy. Our other one was uh, pretty destroyed. They don't last so long in the sun. And our radar reflector is clinking around. You want to tell people what both those things are? Ocean Cruising Club. Um, it's basically like a virtual yacht club. The only way we find each other is through the flags. Um, and the only way to put the, the sole qualification for the club is to complete a thousand mile nonstop sail or motor and a boat under 70 feet. And uh, yeah, we're both members and you fly the flag in harbors and you find other members that way. And they always have interesting stories and adventures for us. And there's also a network of port officers uh, all around the world. So if you need some local support or rides or where to get parts and stuff like that, they have port officers in many locations that help you with local intel. The radar reflector uh, enhances our signature on other people's radars. So even though we have AIS, um, you know, some people aren't able to receive AIS signals, so this allows ships and fishing boats and things to see us better. AIS stands for Automated Identification System and is a way for boats to see each other electronically. It provides basic information on a vessel and is primarily used for collision avoidance. Not all boats have this technology though, so that's where having a radar reflector comes in. Although not all boats have radar either, which is why it's important to keep a visual lookout. Because we don't have any metal on board a sailboat, our engine is relatively small. So this thing angles the radar waves back to the ship and makes our, makes our profile bigger. steak explodes in the bottom of the sailboat freezer, or actually the fridge. Everything has to come out, and you have to clean the whole bottom. It's like a full body. I can't really reach that well. These uh, yeah. companionway stairs have served so many purposes. Today they're going to hold all the food from our fridge. We're also making bacon at the same time because we found some bacon in the back of the fridge that was covered in steak juice. So it's going up. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'll clean that. Ew, 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 ew. Drop it. <laughs> How deep it is. I can't even, like, like, reach the bottom. Ugh. I can't reach. As you can see, the fridge is kind of empty, so it is definitely time to fill it back up, and that's what we're going to do today. Off the food shop and we go. This is what happens when you've been out of the country for a while and you go a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit overwhelming. I <laughs> like <laughs> <My> PBR. <laughs> so much. Uh, 
our motor's being a little cranky lately. That was fun. In the yacht. This fog right now is so crazy. Yeah, it keeps going in and out, like whiteout conditions almost, and then it just blows away. But it's like kind of sunny above us. It's really strange. Yeah, like over here. Like those cruise ships are totally obscured. Over here, it's kind of bright. So there's cruise ship number one, and cruise ship number two out there. See the distance? I know. Now that cruise ship is completely obscured. I'm scared by the fog bank. Yeah, it's disappearing down both of them. It's disappearing out of the It's crazy. Eyes. It's literally, you can't see it at all. <laughs> just gone. You can zoom in more. Imagine you're in a harbor and it's a giant cruise ship. I know, and there's like this race happening over here. You guys can see that in the background. See all those boats racing? So that's happening. And then this freaking cruise ship. One coming in, one going out. Neither one. Neither one easily visible. And I'm really happy we're on anchor. I'm just coming around right now. So close. Come on, Tiki. I don't think much, I gotta clean up the carpet, I guess. I mean, to be fair, uh, this is a known. Yeah, it's been running a little rough the last two days. <laughs> it's a known issue. Never a good time to take your dinghy out of service, though. It's a problem here. Especially not when it's foggy like this, because I think it's beautiful, and I would love to go down to the wharf um, downtown and do some filming, but. Our car isn't running, so can't do that. Time to take the motor apart. What are you gonna do today, exactly? I'm gonna take the carb off, and we're gonna try to soak that. This is the air box here, and the carburetor lives inside here. So I'm going to open this up. There's two long bolts that hold the air box and carburetor together. So I'm removing those. Here's the carburetor. <coughs> The choke valve. Um, still some fuel inside there, as you can see. This is the fuel pump here. Um, so basically, when I removed this from the motor, I attached a little arm here. I, I popped this arm out, and I removed the clamp for the fuel line going to the fuel pump and carburetor. Here is the. This is the float. I have to remove the float. Get the carb jets. Jets, I usually will take a needle and prick holes. Um, so it's a little oily and dirty, so. I'm going to soak the carb, the jet here, in a little bit of carb cleaner. I, fill, I just fill up the lid and let it sit there for a little bit to help break up some of the gunk. The other jet I finally figured out is not this, it's uh, inside here. So this is the low speed jet, tiny. Um, I'm going to soak him as well in the same place. And then I'm going to take a needle and uh, clean out each of the little holes. That's the little pinholes that let the fuel flow through. If there's any little gunk in any of these holes, it's going to stop the whole motor. Hopefully this is fixed. We'll see. Otherwise, it's back to the drawing board. I'm going to go reinstall this in the motor now, though.
that was a fail. Motor still won't start, um, so I am going to change the spark plugs. I have new spark plugs on board. Um, first, you have to gap them. Gap meaning this little distance between the electrode and this metal thing. It's supposed to be gapped one millimeter. So I have this little gap wrench. Yep, that one mil. Nice, honey. So we need to do spark plugs, I guess, eh? There's only one way to know for sure, so next Bill's got to take Tiki for a test run. Fail. Oh, honey. Just died? Yeah, it was running rough, and then it kind of died, and I was upside down. Hmm. It's not easy to row these things. No, they're not easy to row. I've been there. It's almost acting like... Is the air getting in somewhere? I don't know. It's running... It's idling fine, and then it was... So it's 7 a.m. and our time in Newport is officially over. We've woken up to pretty cold temperatures um, and it's making the early morning situation with potential sailing upwind a little less easy to deal with. You ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> it's cold. I'm trying to hang out by the heater, but uh, time hey, has come. Let's do this thing. <laughs> Hooey! That's a bit of a workout for the morning. <laughs> Just think, you'll have a windlass soon enough. Yeah, that'll be nice. Very nice. Want to see it, Will? Last night, we anchored at Fisher's Island, having come from Newport. Today, we're aiming for the Thimble Islands, about 35 miles away. I can't see you through the Dodger. The Dodger's all smoky. Hey. Okay. Can't see anything. That's why I was awkwardly standing because the Dodger's completely fogged over. Which I don't think has ever happened before. Craziness. <laughs> How was that, that anchor job? Seemed okay. Yeah. Tough uh, one? No, it hurt a little. Oh, I forgot. We 
actually back in our old stomping grounds and um, being in the Long Island Sound after uh, doing some ocean sailing for the past year, um, it's kind, it's kind of weird. Um, in particular, right now, we're passing through a part of uh, the Long Island Sound called the Race, um, and it's basically just strong current. Um, and at the moment, the wind is on the nose of the boat, so we're heading into the wind, and the current's going the other way. The current's going with us, and the wind is coming this way. Current, wind. So it's creating chop. And we're really bouncing in, in waves and getting a little bit of spray. And I know for a fact this used to make me very seasick. Um, so I think basically sailing in the ocean has effectively broken me down, um, which is good because I'm really enjoying this passage. The current, the race that I'm talking about, thanks honey, is right there. See how it says two, four? I know I'm moving around a lot, but... Um, so that's 2.4 knots of current um, going in that direction, which is the direction we're headed. But again, we have this wind on the nose coming in that direction, so it's creating a little chop. directly because the wind is on the nose and because the current started to cause a problem for us um, because the wind picked up and then the waves picked up and then we really weren't making any progress motoring we decided to sail towards Long Island which is the other side and then we're going to tack around and sail back to Connecticut because one thing we do have going for us today is we got up really early and we left at six so even though we're going to be sailing a lot more miles we're hoping to still kind of get close to where we wanted to be. Nice. Gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> the Long Island Sound is kicking our butts right now. I don't know what's going on, but this is not a comfortable sea right now. Okay, take it all back. Mercy. <laughs> oh man, they always say sailing through schedules is like one of the worst things you could do. And I'm believing it right now. We would not normally put ourselves out in foul current, 20 knots of wind, pounding our way up the sound. But uh, we don't have much of a choice because we have engagements on shore and uh, trying to make it down to Annapolis Boat Show. But uh, yeah, four more hours of this. <laughs> Waves breaking over and steep, confused seas. The seas were angry that day, my friend. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, the sky is darkening. It's going to rain on us soon. So, uh, We've been trying to get to these Thimble Islands for years. We hear that it's difficult to anchor. There's some current issues, but um, I don't know. It's the only place that's really right off the, right off the sound here. And uh, yeah, might as well explore what it's all about. And it's only 3 o'clock. It's only 3 o'clock. So um, pretty early in the day. We can start up again tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do the early tide again tomorrow. I'd like to think that it could possibly be worse tomorrow than it was today. Terrifying. I'd say we got in just in time. <laughs> Seriously, it's a pretty big squall. This is a huge squall.
Hey guys, so you may have noticed that we didn't resolve uh, the dinghy motor issue in this episode. Um, we have tons filmed on actual resolution of this problem. If you'd like to see how we resolved it and are interested in technical videos, leave a comment below and uh, we'll create a video in the next couple days to show you how we fixed the issue.